Good morning. I'm Sherman Ikimoto, General Manager for Future Facilities in North America. And I'm here with Rich at the uh, Data Center World Show in Las Vegas. And uh, we're talking to Rich today about our new release of Six Sigma DC software, which is coming out actually next week, so we're announcing it here at the show. And uh, just give you a quick example, we do data center modeling from concept design all the way through end of life of the data center. And this here is a typical data center model in our Six Sigma DC software. Um, it does a particularly good job at modeling uh, airflow and temperatures throughout the data center. It has a very powerful CFD engine built into the software. And so this is a Dell data center in Austin, Texas. And uh, as you can see, these types of models for, for operational live data centers are very detailed. It's got a complete description of the IT infrastructure, including a complete listing of uh, IT equipment and where they sit in the, in the room and in the cabinets. And also, on the infrastructure side, it models the cooling system in, in a lot of detail, including how they're controlled. Uh, in, in this case, this is controlled on return air temperature. So these models uh, are necessary, the, this level of resolution for the model is necessary in order to manage properly uh, space, power, cooling, airflow, um, even down to things like network ports, port availability, um, uh, power distribution, weight on the raised floor, all that is captured in the model. And the benefits of this type of model is that you can model and control the airflow to the point where you can um, uh, manage for margin on inlet temperature of specific units of IT equipment in the facility. So you can build margin in on inlet temperature and then save energy on the cooling system uh, side of the facility uh, using this model. And we've seen um, uh, cooling system efficiency gains of up to 40% uh, on the cooling system side and 15 to 20% overall for the facility. And then, of course, that translates into a longer lifespan for the facility, uh, you know, sometimes adding years to the useful life. One of the new features of Revision 6 is the ability to turn a very detailed model, like the one you saw in the animation, into a live CFD model. So we have an API now that's available to connect to live monitoring, uh, either from systems like Synapsense or RF code, or power consumption monitoring from systems like uh, Geist, from Geist Manufacturing, and then even um, automatic update and synchronization of the detailed CFD model and IT asset databases. And Enlight, uh, for example, uh, we are working with to uh, synchronize their IT database and the CFD model. And this allows the CFD model to go live and be used for operational management decisions and to manage airflow actively, and also for space, power, cooling, networking, weight on the raised floor. So we're going to show a quick demo with Tom, and he'll take you through a scenario where an IT ops person is using the CFD simulations to help decide where to place IT equipment in his facility, uh, considering cooling and, and space and power and so forth. And then also how engineering can work with IT operations to solve very tricky uh, thermal and airflow management problems in the data center. So I'll turn it over to Tom. Hi, I'm Tom Wu. Uh, so the way we, we see simulation is that it can be used during operations in three ways. You can deploy items within, within preset cooling limits. You can break these limits and have engineering either help you out or, or run a CFD verification that, it's, that you're still running at a healthy range. And the idea is that in, in a data center, your equipment, your layout is always changing. Servers are coming in, they're coming out, they're powered on and off. Uh, applications are being loaded on and off. And because of that, it, we also have resetting cooling limits using simulation. It's a smart way to determine how much cooling you have and account for change in your data center. So I'm going to go into our data center tool, Six Sigma ITM. Okay. So in Six Sigma ITM, in this tool, this is an already solved CFD model. And quickly, I can use this to find out where all my available use are, my planned IT limit, my available load, etc. These very quick plots. And the idea is that now operations can create new deployments very easily, taking into account cooling, which is 
the the more the trickiest part. So let's say I want to install these HP ProLiant servers. Clicking them all and looking at the model, I see that everything's in green, meaning I can go ahead and ins install these. But let's say I, I want them all within the same rack. Now I can choose rack C4 and decide to install in this cabinet. I'm within compliance. I'm not breaking my IT limit. Everything's happy. I also want to install these two Blade Center E's. Uh oh. And in addition to that, right, right away I see that if I install in this cabinet, it will violate cooling. Okay. Let's say I wanted them together for for whatever purposes. Now everything is violated because of because of cooling limits. At this point, operations are stalled. They can either break it without any with, with, without ignoring the consequences, or they can get engineering to come in and do an analysis to help them out. So I'm going to show my search options, and let's say for now I'm going to install without paying attention to cooling into this cabinet C5. Install in cabinet, and it shows up there as as a, res as a reservation. Submitting my change request, and hitting finish. The engineer will now see I've received a change request from FM server. Do I want to import them now? Hitting OK. And if I take a look at my compliance, I see that I fail in this cabinet. And this is because the uh, operations needed to install into this cabinet and needed engineering help to see whether or not my equipment will still run in a healthy environment. So I've, I have an already solved case, but real quick, going back to the PowerPoint, now we're at the point, part two, breaking the limits. At this point, a CFD simulation could be run to ensure that everything is still running at a healthy range. Okay. And we see in the resulting temperatures that, yes, indeed, everything's running at an acceptable range. At this point, engineering can say, go ahead and install it. You're past cooling limits, but it doesn't harm anything else in the area. It doesn't harm anything in the area. And for, for engineering purposes, they can also see the resulting airflow using CF, it, because the CFD simulation is run and they can use this to verify it. So at this point, we know that in that cabinet we can actually handle a little more load than before. Uh, so, but then your room capacity hasn't changed. So at this point, you can up, you can update the cooling limits based on the changes that you've made in the data center. Okay. Listen, Tom. Thanks for walking us through this. No problem. All right, and Chairman, thanks, thanks for your time. Thanks, Rich. Good to see you.